Hello, what's up everyone? Welcome to our YouTube channel Medit where we are constantly trying to make medical lectures easier for you. Today we'll be talking about this very famous condition called as tetanus and I'll try my best to give you the concepts on this disease so stay with us till the end of the video. The word tetanus is derived from the Latin word tenin which means to stretch. And according to the Greek literature, the word tetanos means muscular spasm. You might have come across this word tetany, which means the spasm or contraction of the muscle. So from the word tetanus, we get an idea it's the disease in which there is a muscle spasm and it's caused by a bacteria. See, there are numerous bacteria in human body, but how did this one, causing tetanus, become so vicious? Even though we have microorganisms on various parts of our body like for example in your mouth, in your anal canal, in your intestines and so on. But if these organisms reach the circulation, it's always dangerous. And tetanus too is caused when the costume organism enters the circulation. And the most common pathway for the organism to enter the circulation is through the wound. See, these wounds are easily contaminated by microorganisms and this condition is called as a wound infection or a surgical site infection. Since there are two ways that you get a wound, it's either by an accident or if your doctor cuts up any of your tissues for a surgical procedure, right? And I've noticed that people often confuse tetanus with other conditions like the poliomyelitis or rabies or any other diseases in which there is a muscle contraction or a muscle spasm. But let me tell you, all of these conditions, they sound familiar, but they are entirely different from one another. And in our upcoming days, we'll be trying to cover these topics too. So basically, what's a tetanus? Tetanus is a non-communicable infectious disease since you do not communicate the disease from one person to another or you don't get the infection from anyone else but from within yourself and it's caused by an organism named as Clostridium tetany. Now we'll be discussing briefly about the causative organism of tetanus called as Clostridium tetany. Clostridium tetany is a bacteria. It's non-aerobic, that means it does not require oxygen for survival. And if you stain the organism using a gram stain, then it is gonna take up the stain and hence it's called as gram-positive organism. So when you view the organism in a light microscope under the gram staining, you're gonna see that the organism appears purple in color because it takes up the gram stain. So the gram-positive organisms take up the stain and appear purple, P for P, purple for positive organisms, okay? Now talking about the morphology of the organism, it's non-capsulated, it means it doesn't have an outer capsule and the organism has got a peritrichus flagella or the flagella is all over its body and hence because of the presence of flagella, it's motile. And it's got a spore in its end of the body due to which it, it's called a terminal spore-bearing organism. And uh, because of this, the appearance of the organism appears like a drumstick. Remember the characteristic appearance, the drumstick-like appearance of the organism because of its uh, spore present on the terminal end of the organism, as you can see in this uh, diagram, okay? And actually, it's the spores that the organism actually bears that are infective, which means capable of causing an infection. And these spores are quite widespread in the soil and animal manures. So what's the fate of the spore? Now, once a person's wound is infected with the spore, the spore starts to germinate under the anaerobic conditions. For example, okay, now, why does this spore need anaerobic condition to germinate? Yes, it's because the Clostridium titani is itself an anaerobic organism. So it needs 
no oxygen like it needs anaerobic condition to grow right so for example you have a wound that has a low oxygen oxidation reduction potential now what that does that mean it means that the wound is not capable of oxidizing or reducing right which means that even if there is an organism it's not able to kill it and this happen because the wound is normally infected or it's it's got a presence of dead tissues in the wound or or presence of any foreign body in the wound wound and due to this the wound has got a low reduction oxidation reduction potential or a redox potential and it makes the uh, environment of the wound an anaerobic one that supports the growth of the organism called as clostridium tetani now your wound is infected with clostridium tetani and it's the so the spores are really germinating rapidly but what's so pathogenic about the organism it means what does the organism actually poses that causes the pathogenicity or the signs and symptoms in a patient suffering from tetanus so yeah let me tell you that the organism it produces two kinds of toxins the name of the toxins are tetanospasmin which is the most common uh, responsible for causing muscle spasm and tetanolysin so remember the name of the toxins released by clostridium tetani which is responsible to cause tetanus those are tetanospasmin and tetanolysin the names are quite easier to remember because it's beginning with the tetano tetano word and even the organism's name is so easy to remember you know that clostridium is an anaerobic organism and the species is tetani itself causing tetanus right so tetanospasmin and tetanolysin now that you've already known that the organism clostridium tetani is responsible for causing tetanus but what are the factors that actually lead to tetanus so since your childhood you might be hearing this thing that the rusted instruments for example the iron nails or any other iron materials they cause tetanus right but let me tell you that it's a myth and it's not completely true but there can be other conditions too that can lead to tetanus for example if you haven't had your prior um, vaccination to tetanus or the toxoid immunization let's say then you're at a high risk of having tetanus whenever your wounds get infected so the nature of the wound that often leads to tetanus are the traumatic wounds which are often deep in nature caused by some sharp instruments and lacerations for example a person has had accident and then he comes up with abrasions all over his knees his elbows such kind of wounds are called as lacerated wound and if there the, if the wound are devitalized or having less oxygen supply let's say and the wound has got foreign body contaminations like the soil contamination mud contaminations or the animal dung contaminations since i have already told you that the spores of clostridium tetani is widespread in soil and animal dung right in the same way the wounds having anaerobic conditions uh, in the tissues for example if there are ulcers what's an ulcer it's the breach or break in the continuity of this lining epithelium okay so you might have ulcers in your gi tract in your mouth in anywhere and one of the most common causes of uh, formation of ulcers is the lack of blood supply and ultimately the lack of oxygen supply and the condition is called as hypoxia similarly if there are abscesses gangrenes and there are burn wounds all this leads to the environment making anaerobic and favoring the growth of the clostridium tetani right similarly if there are chronic kind of wounds for example otitis media which is perforated or the infection has a high chance of spread from one place to another from the middle ear to let's say inner ear or any other parts and in cases of dental caries where the causative organism or the bacteria can lead to your blood stream if the caries is not well treated at time 
cavities basically means cavities just understand that for now and uh, various kind of dental procedure for example the tooth extractions um, the root canal treatments and various other surgical procedures that are done without following the aseptic procedures means there is high risk of bacterial contamination and if the equipments are not properly sterilized so all of these uh, i mean all of these procedures they can lead to direct introduction of the bacteria into the circulation even these very small units are at high risk of having tetanus especially in our country in the rural areas there is a high prevalence of home delivery right the babies are given birth at home and in the local uh, setup when they give birth to a baby they use improperly sterilized utensils to cut the umbilical cord after the child has been born and uh, i don't know why but the people they apply some kind of substances that are in, uh, that are potentially infectious like the animal dung mud etc to the umbilical stump it means the cut umbilical umbilical cord um so this directly causes to the infection right in this condition the wound obviously gets contaminated and it's obvious that the organism clostridium tetani enters the circulation through the umbilical cord so in our country that's the main cause uh, why a uh, new unit suffers from tetanus so you just have to understand that if the childbirth occurs in a septic conditions or septic means unsterilized kind of conditions similarly the needle prick injuries for example tattooing or earlobe piercing in some instances animal biting might also lead to tetanus but it's not due to any microorganism that's transmitted by the animal but it's because of the wound that eventually gets contaminated so the gist you have to understand is tetanus commonly occurs when you have a deep wound caused by some sharp instruments and if the wound is contaminated by soil or animal dung or if the wound has got conditions that make the anaerobic environment for example in ulcers abscesses gangrenes then that contains the organism clostridium tetani and it really favors the growth of the organism which eventually leads to tetanus so wrapping up the predisposing factors for tetanus are absence of prior tetanus to toxoid immunization traumatic wounds which can lead to deep wounds lacerations devitalized wounds and presence of foreign body in wounds for example the soil mud contaminations and some wounds having anaerobic conditions like the chronic ulcers gangrene burns abscesses dental procedures that are conducted by the use of unsterilized instruments the septic abortions and giving birth in properly septic environment or the unsterilized type of environment tattooing earlobe piercing animal biting in some cases all these factors lead to tetanus So how does tetanus actually develop as a disease? Now we have already known that it's the spore of the Clostridium tetani that is actually infective. And the first episode that occurs in the development of a disease is the entry of the spore into the wound and ultimately the wound contamination. The spore whenever finds the anaerobic condition in the wound, it starts to germinate. After the spore germination a huge amount of bacteria are released which keep on multiplying and release exotoxins Now I assume you are quite aware that gram positive bacteria release toxins in the form of exotoxins and the gram negative release endotoxins Okay so let me quickly give an easy tip to remember this fact See there is an x in exotoxin which if you flip appears like a plus sign which you can remember as gram positive so yes gram positive releases exotoxins and conversely gram negative releases endotoxins and these toxins are responsible for the pathogenicity of a bacteria in tetanus these exotoxins are in the form of tetanospasmin and tetanolysin as i had already mentioned 
lice means to break down and hence the toxin tetanolysin starts breaking down the RBCs in the circulation which is a process called as hemolysis. In the same way, the tetanospasmin 2 reaches the circulation and in both of these cases a condition called as toxemia which means toxin in blood is caused. These toxins now reach the neuromuscular junction and block it which exaggerates the muscle spasm episodes. But the work of tetanospasmin is not done yet. It enters the CNS either through lymphatics or via the perineural sheath. Once the tetanospasmin enters the CNS, it blocks the cholinesterase enzyme at the anterior horn cells of the spinal cord. Cholinesterase is an enzyme that helps in breaking down the acetylcholine molecules. Normally, acetylcholine binds to the muscarinic receptors and causes muscle contraction. Now whenever there is a decrease in cholinesterase enzyme, the degradation of acetylcholine is hindered and hence this increases the muscle spasm episodes. As a result, the nerves and the muscles are hyperexcitable and reflex muscle spasms occur, leading to a state called as tonic-clonic convulsions, in which the tonic and the clonic state interchangeably occur. In the tonic state, the muscle tone increases which leads to stiffening of the muscles and in clonic phase, jerks or twitching episodes which is an involuntary contraction of the muscle fibers appear. Once the toxin is fixed in the nerve tissue, it can no longer be neutralized by the use of antitoxin and hence, it's said that tetanus cannot be completely cured but only the symptoms are relieved. The incubation period is the number of days between you are infected with something and the symptoms actually starts to appear. So the incubation period for tetanus is 7 to 14 days or 1 to 2 weeks which means that once a person is infected by tetanus the symptoms start to appear only 1 to 2 weeks after it. There are various types of tetanus out of which the generalized is the most common one as the name generalized itself suggests. The localized form is less severe. Now let's talk about all of them briefly. Early tetanus is a severe form with a short incubation period. The signs and symptoms appear quite early due to which it has a poor prognosis. Latin tetanus often called as delayed tetanus. The patient has a wound which is healed and forgotten about and opposite to early tetanus it has a long incubation period, maybe even years and after which under favorable condition the spores release bacteria and causes tetanus. It carries better prognosis than early tetanus. Late tetanus is different from the latent tetanus in which the disease develops many months after injury. Ascending tetanus is the type of tetanus in which the signs and symptoms progress from below upwards which means the mild symptoms appear first and become severe with time. Cephalic means involving head and the cephalic tetanus involves the facial nerves and ultimately the facial muscles are involved. Nerves third oculomotor, fourth trochlear, sixth abducens and seventh facial are most commonly involved. When the third or the oculomotor cranial nerve is involved, it results in a condition called as ophthalmoplasia, which is an abnormal eye movement due to eye muscles paralysis. When the twelfth nerve, called as hypoglossal nerve, is involved, there is a spasm of tongue muscles. The word localized means not widespread and hence the localized tetanus is the type of tetanus in which the muscles adjacent to the site of wound or the muscles of one segment or specifically just one area develop spasm. It is less severe form of tetanus and it occurs due to less virulent toxin or the released toxins are in less concentration which is not much enough to cause severe symptoms. Bulbar tetanus is highly fatal one in which the muscles of swallowing or deglutition and respiration are involved and we know that when respiration is compromised the person definitely dies. 
The next condition which is common is tetanus neonatrum or seventh day tetanus or a neonatal tetanus in which the tetanus occurs in neonate. The spread is through the umbilical cord and it carries very high, nearly about 100% mortality. So to sum up, generalized is the most common one, localized is the less severe one, cephalic involves the facial nerve muscles and the neonatal one occurs in neonates and has a high rate of mortality. The bulbar tetanus is highly fatal one.